Good afternoon and welcome to today's video. Now we're going to be taking a look at a friend's 22 inch Ferguson TV. Uh, TV uses the TX10 chassis. Now a couple of things to mention about um, investigating problems with TVs. There are a couple of really great groups on Facebook which uh, if you need any help I recommend you join. The first one is the Vintage TV um, Enthusiast Group. Uh, links to these are in the description. And there's also Electrotat TV and Video, which is another very good group to join. Each of these groups have got, uh, in some cases, a number of ex-professionals. Um, well, they're still professionals, but they have um, sort of effectively hung up their sort of day job. And um, there are a number of very seasoned enthusiasts on these groups as well, whose advice is well worth taking and well worth heeding. Other places to look is the internet, believe it or not, some very good resources on the internet for some of the more common models, and also the vintage TV and radio um, forum, internet forum, which unusually for an internet forum these days is still very active and also another place worth going for information, even if it's just using their search function. Anyway, thank you for uh, that little introductory bit and thank you for listening. And we're going to move on to the main piece. So before starting any work, it's a good idea to have a copy of the official service manual. Now, the service manual I got for here was purchased on eBay for not a huge amount of money, actually. It's probably about a tenner. And that covers the TX-10. It also seems to be a later manual because it covers a number of the production modifications. Now... When I reviewed the circuit diagram, I noted that there were a few sorry, a few uh, resistors which were around R851, which is the resistor I replace, which is the width resistor. So the symptoms of the problem that we have is there is no adjustment for width, and the picture itself is actually sort of almost too wide. Um, it's watchable, but it's not perfect, to be honest with you. So this is the circuit diagram, this is the width control and EW module. And you can see R15, RV851 there, you can see that there. Um, that is our variable resistor for width. And you can also see that we have associated with that R856, R858, and I think there is a R853 and 854 as well. So what I actually ended up doing was measuring all of the resistors on the board for um, their impedance and noted that some of them were slightly either low or high in value. And it's when I sort of come around to do anything with this set next, it's going to be those particular resistors that I'll be replacing um, in order to sort of try and um, try and restore. Uh, some of the um, width adjustment capability on this particular set. Now, as you can see, we've got the back off, and you can see in front of us that we've got the uh, the rather attractive TX10 chassis. The set is unplugged, and underneath the red cover is effectively the hot side of the set. So there's a lot of um, when it's on, there's a lot of current under there, and generally not something you really want to be poking about with. Um, you can also see in the background the uh, the A56 540X Mullard tube. A uh, good tube for its day. We're not sure what colour label is this on this one. There is a theory which actually seems to play out that if you have a green label 540X tube, you've got a tube that seems to accept uh, rejuvenation far better than any of the other la label colours and also seems to be better built than a number of the other tubes. Of, um, of a number of other incarnations of the tube with different coloured labels. Now there is a bleed resistor fitted um, to the anode cap which should, when you turn the set off, actually bleed HT current from the, uh, the, the um, tube itself. However, as you can see what I'm doing here is I'm earthing the um, set onto the metal um, strap that surrounds the tube, which is a good place to earth onto from what I've been advised, and poking a flat blade screwdriver with the um, 
crocodile clips attached underneath the anode cap and uh, you'll be able to tell if you have any voltage or any voltage left in the tube, any capacitance left in the tube by the fact that it will actually make a sort of cracking slash sparking noise. Once it's done that the tube is safely discharged. In my case um, the set had been off for a few minutes and it does appear that that resistor is still working, still functioning without any issues at all. So the set, the tube itself, was actually uh, completely discharged. Um, it's a good idea when you're inside, as with anything that I sort of tend to do, is just to sort of clean up any dust or anything like that. Um, what can happen is the dust can track moisture, uh, which can cause obviously short circuits within the set. Make sure you're using a fully insulated screwdriver. Um, the one here is only insulated on the handle. And also make sure that you keep your hands behind your back or your other hand behind your back so that you're not earthing yourself anywhere. Um, really just for sort of safety. So you can see there I've actually just gone through and uh, moving on to the next stage now which is to remove the neck board. So the neck board is this item here board on the actual neck of the tube and uh, that powers all of the uh, electron guns and associated grids. There is on this particular set a what I think is an earthing cable off the actual um, socket itself which goes on to the uh, earthing strap around the tube and that can just be sat gently out of the way. Um, you can also if you want give the tube neck uh, a clean up as I'm doing here just get rid of some of the dust that sort of surrounded it over the years. Um, and what I have done in the past is actually taken some very fine grade wet and dry to those pins that you can see on the back. Um, a lot of problems and a lot of strange symptoms can simply be just problems with um, a loose connection or a bad connection and you can actually clean those up. You can also, if uh, you're so inclined, remove the first anode cap, which is that cap you can see at the top of the picture, the one I discharged earlier. And you can actually clean around that cap, remove any dirt, etc. And that can alleviate any um, flashovers or anything of that sort of nature. And uh, any uh, problems that you may have. I had once a tube or a set rather, I think it was a Sony of some description, KV27X1 if I remember rightly, I can't remember the exact model number. Um, and there was sort of always a sort of a faint s sparking sound coming from, around, coming from around the anode cap when the set actually started up. So when I was doing some other work inside the set actually um, removing a load of dry joints which Sony's funny enough do seem to suffer from uh, I took the time to remove the first anode cap and actually clean uh, the anode cap area completely just to make sure that we didn't have any sort of dirt hanging around in there. Now the component that I replaced was a variable resistor RV851. Now as I said earlier in the video I was looking at another resistor R851. To add to the confusion RV851 is a completely separate resistor. It's the variable resistor for width adjustment. R851 is a completely separate resistor in its own right. You also have capacitors which are obviously labelled C and then a number of capacitor. And what I'm showing you here very briefly is the width um, pot on the schematic of the main board for the TX10. If you have a super sound set you're going to have a broadly very similar board um, obviously if you've got the 22 inch and above super sound, if you've got the 20 inch super sound you've got a TX9 chassis. Um, you're going to have a broadly similar board although there will be some additional circuitry for uh, the stereo sound processing. If you've got a set with teletext you will have an additional board for your teletext decoder. This particular set is, I'd say, sort of middle of the road spec. Um, it comes with an infrared remote and obviously an 8 channel um, capability. So you've got 8 channels that you can store. Um, nothing really sort of more fancy than that. We did speculate that the tube itself is quite, an hard, quite a high hour tube. The picture is a little bit soft and does seem to get better 
as the set warms up so it is one of those situations that may benefit from a rejuvenation now little mistake I made there is tilting the chassis up without closing that back panel make sure that back panel is closed and that your neck board is securely out of the way because if that back panel flips up it could hit, hit that tube neck and you will basically in inverted commas neck the tube which is not something you really want to do anyway there is um, the board on the right sorry the far end of the picture there on the left hand side which I'm just disconnecting a load of connectors on and like in uh, the inside of the Ferguson video recorders there is uh, those little sort of twist clip things that you can untwist and remove the entire loom from inside of those clips which does give you a bit more uh, sort of leeway you can see on the right hand side you've got uh, a couple of connectors going into the decals coil and you can release those as well if you so desire just to give you a bit more um, sort of access to the actual chassis itself what I ended up doing was removing the cables on the side of the uh, the panel itself that far panel that you can see there clipping the back portion of the chassis back into place tilting the chassis upwards and conducting all of my work with the chassis in a vertical configuration it was enough for what I needed to do and I only had to pretty much just solder in um, three separate uh, soldering joints so I did try, as you can see here, removing the connector from uh, the deflection coil, but it felt very brittle, and I didn't want to get into a situation where I pretty much broke the board to the deflection coil. Um, number one, because it's not my set, and number two, because it would be a, uh, a massive imposition if you did do that, especially on... Um, a set that you can't really get spares from anymore, certainly big ticket items like tubes and deflection coils. Anyway, for the next portion um, I'm going to speed up the video a little bit and you can see uh, what I went through to actually get the um, variable resistor off of the board. It's very simple to work on. Uh, the main thing to remember is, certainly with televisions, respect the fact that they are incredibly high voltage items respect the fact that they will bite you hard if you do something wrong in other words work on it without discharging the tube or work with it the with the mains turned on when making adjustments to these potentiometers always use a completely insulated fully insulated screwdriver and keep your hand away from any of the sort of the hot items such as the anode cap um, the power supply, line output transformer, chopper transformer, etc. Um, thankfully, all of the adjustment pots are actually on a side of the board where there isn't, you know, sort of huge, horrible voltages going through, but it would be enough to give you a bit of a sting if it was turned on and you were working on the set at the time. Anyway, let's take a look at the process and uh, see where we are shortly. So making use of the soldering iron, which had left warming up for a little while, and the solder sucker, I was able to make short work of the solder joints holding in that uh, little potentiometer variable resistor. Once, um, obviously make sure that you keep the board steady. It is actually a good idea to have an assistant on hand, or um, someone that can just sort of hold the board whilst you're soldering. Um, ideally, you would want to remove the chassis completely from... Uh, the unit itself. If you are going to do that, like anything of this sort of nature, make sure you take photographs of where the um, connectors all plug into so that when you come to reassemble everything you're not going to be in a situation where you can't um, remember where things were. Now you might see in this picture near the connectors you've got three orange capacitors and then you've got a series of potentiometers now those potentiometers actually handle all of the presets for um, the set itself, so brightness, colour, contrast, etc. 
You'll also see, interestingly, that that little board has got TX9 marked on it, so I do wonder if that little board is shared between the TX9 and TX10 chassis. You saw there briefly a uh, display of the, uh, the classic Type F um, test card, just uh, showing that the set was back up and working, but that we still had the width issue. The next thing um, that I went on to do was to measure the value across the various resistors associated with that um, variable resistor for width. Um, it seems that those resistors also serve the pin cushion adjustment and a couple of other adjustments as well on the board, possibly height, etc. So they're all sort of effectively variable resistors in a similar sort of area and seem to sort of link in uh, circuit wise so it does make sense that um, if because we, we, we're also getting sort of incomplete um, pin cushion adjustment as well we can't really adjust the pin cushion fully so as a knock-on effect there may be some resistors in that circuit which are causing us issues as well this is where having the circuit diagram and the exact value of the resistors really comes in handy. So at the moment we've got on order um, a couple of resistors which are located around the width control. And I think we're also going to order in um, possibly a new potentiometer for the pin cushion control and a couple of resistors for the um, pin cushion circuit as well. Anyway, it's been quite a fun video, quite enjoyed this one, it was uh, quite fun actually getting inside a set again, I haven't done it for a number of years, so getting back inside a set again sort of takes me back to where my hobby effectively started with these things and, you know, all of the uh, <laughs> things that I learned along the way. If you have found this video interesting, don't forget to hit that like button, and also consider subscribing for more upcoming fascinating hobbies. Thank you for watching.